A river has flowed along the Avon Valley for thousands of years, since the end of the last ice age over 10,000 years ago, when great glaciers carved out the sides of the mountains. The River Avon probably looks much the same today as it did to the earliest inhabitants of the area, following its slow, meandering course below the steep hillsides. Before running out into the flat coastal plain at Aberavon, now a part of the modern town of Port Talbot. And from here, the river flows steadily and timelessly into the Bristol Channel. The village of Aberavon, according to legend, has occupied three different sites over the years, for the coastline has altered with the passing of the centuries. The first two settlements were situated nearer to the sea, but there are no visible signs now to show where, except that in the 1830s a variety of artefacts were unearthed during the building of the docks, finds ranging from Roman to medieval. The first inhabitants of Aberavon would have been small nomadic groups similar to those encamped at Merthyr Mawr near Porthcawl. Stone Age axes have been discovered on Aberavon Beach. Bronze Age relics on the sands near Margam, now occupied by the Deepwater Harbour. After bronze came iron, worked by the people known as the Celts. Local life was chiefly devoted to farming. In summer, the herds and flocks were driven up onto the higher ground and then brought back down to the more sheltered lower regions in winter. Welsh place names bear this out. Havod in the summer, Goitra in the winter. During the Roman occupation of Britain, Aberavon lay on the main South Wales coast road, known as the Via Julia Maritima, and although much of this original route no longer exists, it ran not far from today's motorway. Most traces of early Christian worship have disappeared. One of the oldest buildings still in existence is Margam Abbey, founded in 1147. The West Front was substantially rebuilt in the early 19th century by Christopher Rice Mansell Talbot of Margam Estate, but still retains some of its fine Norman features, such as the arch. At one time, two communities lived here, monks of the Cistercian order and lay brethren who tended to the surrounding Grange farms. With the dissolution of the monasteries during the reign of Henry VIII, the abbey was acquired by Sir Rice Mansell, whose tomb is contained in the chapel within the church, and later by his descendants, the Talbot family who built Margam Castle nearby. Little now remains of the extensive abbey buildings apart from the ruined chapter house. On the hillside above Margam Abbey is the stone ruin of Capel Meyer, built in the 15th century. A closer examination of the building reveals evidence of fine windows in both the east and west walls. Surprising, perhaps, for such a small place of worship, situated high on the side of a mountain, but undoubtedly in reverence to the abbey that it overlooked. At the opposite end of Port Talbot, in Baglan, there is another ruin, that of the old church dedicated to St. Baglan. The interior, with its old-fashioned box-type wooden pews, had, by 1954, fallen into disuse, and in that year the church was destroyed by fire. By the late 1800s, it was obvious that the old church could no longer serve the village of Baglan adequately, and a new church was built, paid for by Griffith and Madalena Llewellyn of Baglan Hall and dedicated to St. Catherine of Alexandria. Inside the porch, one on each side of the door, are the carved heads of Griffith Llewellyn, and the Right Reverend Alfred Ollivant, Lord Bishop of Llandaff, who dedicated the church in March 1882. The pulpit depicts Jesus' commission to the apostles, Go ye teach all nations. 
Above the altar, the stained glass east window is the work of Burne Jones, unusually portraying a beardless Christ. Set into the vestry wall is the Branku stone, a superbly decorated block which is believed to date from the 9th century. St. Mary's is the parish church of Aberavon, situated in the centre of the town. At first it was surrounded by fields, but now its position is somewhat overshadowed by loops and swirls of concrete and tarmac, seeming to represent a modern altar for mankind's worship of the motor car. But at least St. Mary's was permitted to remain where it stood. This was not the case for Beulah Chapel, otherwise known as the Round Chapel of Gross, village near Margam. When the motorway was built, Gross had to be erased from the map to make way for the new road, and the chapel was taken down. Fortunately, it was rebuilt in Tolgate Gardens, half a mile away. Many other churches and chapels have been demolished, never to be rebuilt. They have passed into history, some quietly, others less so. When All Saints Church in Comavon was sent into oblivion, it came down with the help of dynamite. After the dust settled and demolition prepared to get underway, less spectacularly, workmen found the weathercock and rescued it from the rubble. St. Michael's Church, Comavon, remains. So do the chapels, such as Ebenezer in Aberavon. Rock Chapel in Pulthy Glau. St. Joseph's Roman Catholic Church, the Chapel of Ease, and St. Theodore's, built by the Talbot family and named in memory of Theodore Talbot. Margam Estate covered a large area of land, and when it passed from the Mansell family to their relatives, the Talbots of Laycock in Wiltshire, industry was only just beginning to establish itself, mainly coal mining iron smelting, tin plate and copper. This rapid growth in industry meant that the existing old harbour at the Bar of Avon was insufficient to handle increasing cargoes, and several local industrialists got together with Christopher Rice Mansell Talbot, Member of Parliament, to set up a company, the purpose of which was to build a dock. The dock became known as Port Talbot, and the first ships sailed from it in 1837. An iron bridge was constructed and opened in 1903 as the main road entrance to the dock from Aberavon. Now rusting badly and only safe for use as a footbridge, its original gas light fittings can still be seen. The river was diverted from its original course to create a new entrance channel for the dock and on the north side of the channel are the remains of a wooden mooring pier, probably once used for the exporting of coal from Comavon. When viewed from the mountain, the extent of the docks can be seen. The Talbots built Margam Orangery at the end of the 18th century. It is the largest of its kind in Great Britain. Margam Castle, built in the 1830s, stands nearby, massive and imposing, Gothic in style and typical of Victorian extravagance. Theodore Talbot died before his father, so the estate passed instead to his sister, Miss Emily Talbot, and on her death in 1918, it was inherited by her nephew, Captain Andrew Talbot Fletcher, from Scotland. However, heavy taxation forced him to sell it in 1941, when it was purchased by Sir David Evans Bevan, a South Wales industrialist. Upon his death in 1973, the estate was taken over and run by the local authority, as it has been ever since.